Hello teachers, we're going to be looking at the MyLexia website today and looking at the different reports that you can pull for student reports. This is the main MyLexia page and on the side you're going to enter your MURSD email and the password that you created for MyLexia and log in. This is the screen that you'll be taken to first. Yours will look different. I have access to all of the school um, groups in my account, but yours will be just based on your classroom. If you're a tutor or a special education teacher, you might have more than one group. And you can view your, um, your main reports here by clicking on the group that you'd like to focus on on the left. And that will take you into um, the class reports. I'm going to go back for a minute and I'm going to focus on this screen for just a minute. This is, these are the tabs that will take you into the different um, reports that we have access to through MyLexia. This is the usage report. So this will give you um, the stats on your class's usage uh, week by week. You can view it by month. You can view it by the whole year. This is the progress tab. So you can see um, as a school, this is what our progress has looked like this year. Um, the gray bar is students who started the year below grade level in the program. And the gray bar over here is currently the amount of students that we have below grade level in the program. The light blue is um, grade level and then the dark blue is above grade level. So um, as a school, we've seen great growth in the Lexia program this year. <clears throat> Down here is the predictors. This is the amount of students the program is predicting will meet the end of year grade level benchmark in the program by the end of the school year. And then over here you can access your certificates and um, this is on mine. I can see um, staff logins as well. So let's go into a class. This is a first grade class and this will give you um, the list of your students, the grade level um, that they're working, the level in the program that they're working at. So the first number here is the grade level that the level they're at is, is um, meant to be focusing on. And then this is the level number in the program. So level six is a first grade level, level 10 is a second grade level and so on. This is their predictor. So the, the um, predictor is telling you the, ch the likelihood of the student reaching the end of grade level by the end of the year. So this first student has a 28% chance of finishing the first grade material in the program, but you can see that a number of students in this class have either already hit it or are working towards it. And then over here, this is the weekly usage. So you have their weekly total, and then the next number is their target, which is the amount of minutes that the program is recommending they use. <clears throat> so um, let's look at the student right here. His weekly target is 30, and he has 38 minutes this week, so he's already met his usage, which means over here under time needed, he has a zero. This class, I know, is always meeting their usage, so I don't have anyone with time needed for this week. but. If we did have someone that hadn't met their target yet, this row over, this column over here would tell you that um, they need X amount of minutes to get to this number in the middle. And then over here under units is the amount of units that they've completed within the program. The actions column over here can show you quickly who has lessons for reteaching, who has skill builders available. Those are the packets that are given to students when they complete the levels. And who has certificates that can be printed by the teacher. So if they've completed a level and they've earned a certificate, that little blue um, circle will show up and you can click on it and it will take you to the certificate. You can also click up here and quickly get all of the certificates that are ready for printing. So this is the class table. If we click up here, in class reports. This will bring us to, similar to the first page, that those tabs that will bring you into the different class reports. So we're going to start with skills prog progress. 
and this screen is showing you um, the progress students have made in the program this year. So down here we have the students and the arrows are showing you where the students tested in at the beginning of the year. So this is showing us that this student tested in at level six. This student above him tested in at level five. So the arrows are going through the levels that the student didn't have to go in and complete because when they originally tested into the program, they tested beyond those levels. The check marks are showing you the levels that they've completed. So we have some students that have completed a number of levels. Um, this is a class that uses the program frequently, so we have really great progress here. And then the last square with the percentage in it is showing you what percentage of this current level they have completed. So you can go in and see who might be close to finishing level. The student has 76% completed, 82% um, over here, and who might be just starting a new level. The green line is showing you the end of year benchmark for this grade. So this is a first grade class. The line is right here between first grade skills and second grade skills, and you can kind of get a, a clear picture of how close students are or if they've already met that end of year benchmark. All right, so if we go back to class overview and class reports, we can go into the next report, which is the usage report. This report will show you your usage. And as I mentioned before, this class has great usage. They're up there, they're using it at home as homework, they're using it in the classroom as um, part of their daily five, and I think even as morning work as well. And then down here, you can see by student this week, I'm gonna go into someone who doesn't have 100%, and you can see the weeks that they did not meet usage, the weeks they did, you can change it to see the whole school, school year. You can check, change it to see last week, each day, how many minutes were gained. Um, four weeks is the standard that's going to come up when you first go in. This is the target in blue, and they're showing you either in gray or green whether they met or did not meet the target. And then down here you can see by week whether they have made it, how many more minutes they needed, um, how many units they gained over here. And I'm gonna go back to class reports and go into predictors. These are the predictors. So as you can see in this class we have 56% of the students on target to meet the end of first grade benchmark by the end of the year. 39% of the class is at is rated at some risk. So they have a chance to meet that, that um, benchmark and they're working toward it. Um, there's, there's a chance that they'll meet it, there's a chance that they won't. And then we have 6%, which is only one student in this class that likely will not meet that benchmark. And you can see how students have worked through the predictors for the year. So this student has always been in the green. We knew he was going to be meeting that end of year benchmark. He's on target. This student started in yellow, as did this one, and then moved into the green with great progress. And you can see some students have moved back and forth between yellow and green. The student moved from red to yellow, which is great to see. So um, there's all different kind of combinations here that go into the program creating their predictor. All right, so now I'm gonna go into a student. And this is the student report page. So in this page, you're getting more of that same data, um, but broken down for the individual students. So if we go down here and we go to their usage report, oops, sorry, I'm gonna go back. If we go to their progress report, this will break down all of the individual skills that the student has worked on from the beginning of the year. So you can see up here, the student started this year at level one and she's worked up through to level eight with some really, really hard work. 
um, completing all those levels. So this will give you the breakdown of all of the skills from level one through level eight. So right here at the top, you can see this is level eight where she is right now. And what we want to see is similar to this, a nice angle upwards with consistent growth in the program. Where you have these plateaus, this is a place where you might want to go in and check out what is going on. Um, you can click on any of these circles and it will go into that skill and it will show you. Now this is the two syllable words that we were just looking at and it's breaking down the different units that the student had to complete in the program. It's telling you how long it took for the student to complete the unit. So right here, this is a lot of time, 41 minutes. And if you can see over here, she had 21 attempts on this step. So in comparison to some of these others where she was getting through them on one attempt, she went through this one 21 times and these little symbols over here, as you can see from the key, are showing you standard instruction, which is the first step that the program gives them to complete a task. Guided practice, so when she drops into that guided practice and she gets something wrong and it reteaches, that's the blue square. The yellow circle is when it goes into that really explicit reteaching mode. Um, so she actually dropped down to direct instruction four times. There would have been a, a lesson generated for this. And you can see up here that her accuracy was low and her rate was slow for this skill. So this is an area that this student really could use some direct instruction um, with it within a small group or one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. In comparison, long vowel teams up here, she was high, high with her accuracy and average with her rate. So that's a skill that she looks like she's pretty solid on. But this is a quick way to kind of scroll through and see what the student is struggling with and what might benefit um, some extra resources being pulled. So that was two syllable words in level eight. So now if I go over here to the left and click on resources, I can go into the Lexia lessons and I have access to all of the reteaching lessons here. I can search for two syllable words and it's gonna come up. I want a lesson because this student is not ready for a skill builder. Skill builders, are, skill builders as a reminder, are meant to be independent once students have finished a level. Um, this student has not finished this level and is clearly needing some reteaching. So we're gonna go for the lesson and this will pull up the lesson. Now up here you can see it's 16 pages long. So this might be something that you want to kind of go through and see if there are certain parts that you want to pull out for this student. Um, but there's a script, there's, there's a list of materials, you can use magnetic tiles, um, and it really breaks down the lesson. So this could even be given to a tutor, a student teacher, for someone to go over this specific skill with the student um, to give them some practice. Now, if that's done and the student continues through the program, finishes that skill and has shown some progress, we can go back up, we can find the skill builder. And this is the skill builder that can then be given for independent practice. So I know teachers have used these, um, particularly in third grade and fourth grade and students have um, gotten some good practice after finishing the levels. Um, so there's all different types of activities. I've even seen um, some teachers, and I've done it myself, kind of take these um, and create uh, more hands-on small group activities by laminating them using um, dry erase markers or um, you know cutting the pieces out and having them being able to manipulate them and move them around. So there's a lot of options um, available with the materials in the Resources Center. And the Resources Hub, this is back to the main um, screen, has the lessons, the skill builders, and the connections as well. And the connections, I'll just go in <clears throat> and go to the two-syllable connection. This is the page um, that's giving you just some ideas most of them are going to be ideas using materials you already have in your classrooms. 
Um, and they're just, you know, things that could be done at um, your calendar time in the morning or things that can be done in small reading groups um, as warm-ups. They're just some quick ideas to, to work these skills into your, um, your day. So those are the resources available there. Um, let's go into the resources hub before we end. This is the area where you can find um, more resources. So this is another area where, you know, if you needed letter tiles, if you needed picture cards, we have all those things available already, but this is the spot um, where you might be able to find some of those things if you needed them. Um, over here, the close reads, there. these are a great resource for third and fourth grade. Um, and you can go in and download them as PDFs and then print them um, to be used as students complete lessons. Um, they're great for small group work. And then down here, I just want to show you is the school to home tab. This is where we find the letters that can go home for summer home use. These are the, um, this is the original letter that we use um, to send home information if you need it for easy printing. And then in the student achievement, this is where you'll find um, some support with um, certificates and things like that. So these are achievement charts over here that students can use to go in and complete, they can color in the units as they're completing them in the program. Even though the program is, is keeping, char, um, keeping um, track, they can have a chart that they're coloring in and kind of taking ownership of as well. Over here, we have general achievement certificates, which have been great in the lower grades this year, as teachers have given out certificates for unit, um, for level completion. Some students have not earned certificates, and these are great to just keep students motivated as they're working through levels. If it's taking them a little bit longer than their peers, it's great to say, hey, you've been working really hard. Here is Alexia certificate um, for your hard work. All right, so that is the basic uh, information that we're gonna cover today. But as always, I'm always available and willing to sit with anyone who needs help working their way through the program. I know there's a lot of information here. Um, but once we get a handle on it, it can be really useful in a lot of ways. So I hope this was.